I've got a challenge for you. We've got a red div and a green div, each with a child element. And now I'm going to apply some transforms randomly. So they're rotated and scaled and translated. And now if I wanted you to move only the green child, so the parent element stays here, but just this child moves so that its top left corner touches a specific coordinate in the red div, how would you do it? In other words, given a local XY coordinate from the red div, like an XY of zero, zero, so that would be like the top left corner of the red div here, convert that into the green div's local coordinate space. Seems virtually impossible, right? I've never seen anything that can do it, but this is incredibly useful. We needed it for motion path plugin to bend coordinate spaces and align things perfectly on a path. So like we've got this div here and we needed a way to map it onto this path, even if it's got transforms or it's scaled and it does so perfectly. So we already had that built into motion path plugin and we recently exposed the logic in some powerful methods that I am going to show you. But first let's make sure that the problem is clear. Now every element has its own coordinate space and it typically starts at its top left corner. So the window coordinates start here and our red div would have coordinates like maybe an X of 520 and a Y of 10 uh, inside of the, the document element or the window. Now inside of our red div, there's another local coordinate space starting in its upper left corner. So its child is at coordinates of zero, zero at this point. Now, if we want to move the green child to touch the zero, zero coordinate in the red div, which is 200 pixels wide, then we could guess that it would correspond to about negative 200 pixels in the green div uh, coordinate space. But there's also about five pixels of space in between them. So let's try maybe negative 205. So let's actually just tween, let's set up a tween here. Say gsat to two, and we'll do the green child to an X of negative 205. And these are transforms that we're applying. And if we run this, then we should see that it'll line up perfectly with where we're talking about. However, watch what happens if we scale the container, the green um, div. So we'll say green and we'll say scale of half and we'll delay it by two and let's see so again it's going to animate over and then it scales down and oops so the green child is still at a local coordinate of negative 205 inside the green div but all those pixels have been shrunk down now imagine how complex things get when we start introducing rotations and skews don't worry gsap will make it easy I already have a timeline built out that does the applying of random transforms. And then at the end of that timeline, it calls this move function. So here we'll just plop in our solution. Again, this is going to happen after the transforms get applied. All we got to do is we'll create a variable. Just call it P as in like point and it's motion path plugin dot convert coordinates. And the first parameter that we fit in is the element whose coordinate space we're going from. So in this case, it would be the, the red div. And then the coordinate space we're going to, which would be the green div, and then the coordinates. So in this case, we have a variable already defined up here. We could just pass in an object like this and say X of zero and a Y of zero, but we'll just use this variable and same thing. So that is going to convert these coordinates from this space into this space. And that's it. So now let's take care of animating the child there. So we'll say gsap2 green child. And then it is going to be an x, the x property in the point that gets returned. And the y. And then we'll also make it semi transparent just so that we can see it a little bit better. Uh, so let's run this. And then all I have to do is click somewhere on the screen. It's gonna do the animations and look at that perfectly on that point. 
the zero zero local coordinate in the red div got translated into the green one. And I also have a little method here that I built in this code pen called draw local. That's gonna use a, a purple line. And if I click again, you're gonna see, it's gonna um, show us where, it's like the, the Y distance and the X distance in that local coordinate space, um, just to kind of help visualize what it's doing here in terms of plotting the uh, the X and Y. So let's run this again. It's, it's always kind of randomized. So I just click and you'll see it's plotting it down and over and animates it perfectly. So what if instead of the uh, the top left corner, maybe we wanna to go to the top right corner and we know that this red div is exactly 200 pixels wide in its native size. So that coordinate would be an X of 200 and a Y of zero. So let's run this and we shall see what happens. If I click, we fire off the animations and look at that, perfect. And so that also means that the bottom right corner would be a Y of 200 and an X of 200. So let's run this again. Look at that, perfect. Converting coordinates is great, but if your goal is to align two elements, there are some complexities that another method solves even better. For example, what if there are transforms applied to one or both of the elements? What if we wanted to align the red and green child elements, but they're both transformed like this? This is the perfect case for the get relative position method. So we'll go back to our move method here. We are going to swap this out for the get relative position method. And since we're trying to align the green child to the red child, the first parameter is gonna be the from, so it's just gonna be the green child. Second parameter is the uh, to, so it's gonna be the red child. And then uh, that's really all that we need. But this is going to return the distance between the two of them in the coordinate space of the green child, actually its parent. Since it's relative, since it's the distance, the relative distance, we need to make this into a relative uh, tween, or a relative value in the tween. So we just add this little prefix of plus equals, and we we'll run it, and we click the screen, new random stuff happens, and then perfectly align at that top left corner. So even if I run this again, it's all randomized, so it should work every single time. No problem. All right, and what if, like when you're trying to align multiple elements, you don't always want the top left corner. I would say it's more common for you want to want the uh, centers to be aligned. So this method makes that really easy. You can use your array syntax to pass in a progress value along the x axis and the y axis of that element. So um, for example, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 would be the center. If it was 0, 0, that would be the top left. If it was 1, 1, that would be the bottom right. You get the idea. So this is for the from element. So the green child, we want the center of the green child aligned with the center of the red one. Uh, so 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. We should see that once we click, they animate into place, and then eventually their centers get aligned perfectly with one another. So again, we can make the top left of the green align with the bottom right of the red one, like so. It does. So you have total control. You can actually pass in a point here if you would rather. So if you have an X coordinate of 20 pixels over, and again, this is local coordinates inside of that child, the green child. And so over 20 and down 50, for example, you can do that on, on either of these. So if we run this again, then it's going to align that exact point inside of the green child with the bottom right corner of the child. 20 over and 50 down, it's right there. So lots and lots of flexibility, allows you to align two elements. This is the go-to method whenever you want to align two elements. So let me show you a few practical use cases for this. 
So let's say that you've got this, this DOM element that is transformed. It's, it's this dot container that has a dot in it. And see how it's kind of animating down into place and rotating. So let's say I want to click somewhere on the screen and I want that dot to go to wherever my mouse pointer clicked. How would you do that? Well, this makes it pretty easy. So if I click over here, you'll see really wherever I click, even if I drag this entire thing around, notice again that dot is inside of it, so it's being dragged with it. Uh, it doesn't matter. I can click over here now and it goes perfectly to the mouse pointer. And again, that's because it's it's just converting between the window coordinates and the you know inside of that dot container. Another use case, you know, we've got these transformed elements that you know this is a an SVG that I can interactively spin around and it has inertia and everything. So that pink dot, let's say that I've I want to click on one of these blue dots over here that again are in a transformed container and I want them to animate over to wherever that pink dot is, you'll notice that I can do that and it animates perfectly no matter where I position this thing. Uh, I can click on another dot and it goes perfectly to the center. Again, it doesn't matter if it's SVG or a regular DOM element. Um, this all works great. And then lastly, I'm going to show you this. Let's say we've got this SVG where I want this red arm to kind of rotate around and so all we're doing is animating its rotation when i click you'll see that that's animating but also we've got this other box that's actually a group uh, if i show you the markup here um, you'll notice that here's the red arm it's it's a polyline and then we've got this group in which we have the blue arm that's a line and what if i wanted the tip of that arm to be locked in position with wherever the end of that red arm is. Um, you know, you could do a lot of math and try to figure that out, but again, this group is moving and that thing is rotating, so it can become quite a nightmare. Um, but if I, I had already set up a, a function here to do that, if I just use the convert coordinates and feed in the right elements, then I can set attributes like so and if i run this again there it is locked in step with that exact point at the end of the arm now if you're going to be converting multiple coordinates between the two spaces i'm going to show you a little performance enhancing trick so here i've got four different dots inside of the green element and they're positioned at, at each of the corners over in our JavaScript, I'm going to show you these. Uh, I've got an array of points. So these are basically the coordinates of each of those dots in the corners. Because again, the green element is 200 by 200. So in our move, what we're going to do is call the convert coordinates method. But notice that we didn't pass in a point at all as a third parameter. And when you don't provide a point, this method is going to return a matrix 2D object. And that matrix 2D object has all the information to convert coordinates. And all you need to do is call apply on that matrix and feed in a point, any point, and it's gonna do that conversion for you. That's gonna boost performance because in order to build the matrix, it has to do somewhat performance intensive things. And so once those values are locked in, calling matrix.apply on any point is really cheap. So in this case, we, uh, we grab the matrix here, and then we are going to take that array of points from up here, and we're just gonna map it. So the, all this does is loop through each one, and it's calling the apply uh, method on the matrix and feeding in the point. So that basically this becomes, it's just a copy of the points, but they're converted using that matrix. And then we feed them in um, to each element that has the class of dot, and then it, it uses the, the function-based value syntax to just find that converted point. So if I click here, you're gonna see that it does our little animation, and they line up perfectly. So if I, again, run this, it's gonna randomize it again, and you'll see that every time it works just great mapping all of those coordinates over using only one matrix. While this is a relatively advanced topic and you're probably not going to find yourself needing to convert coordinates every day, it's really, really useful. If you want to learn more, go to greensock.com. Happy tweening.